guys, Awesome Nerd Show here, and today we are doing a review of the Logan movie. Of course, the new Wolverine movie that goes along with X-Men and all that sort of stuff. Um, but we just got back from seeing the premiere of it on Thursday night and stuff, so it's pretty late, so we're going to try and do this kind of fast and stuff. But we'll do the first part with no spoilers, and then in the second part we'll like talk about whatever and stuff. So I'll let you know when the, it's going to change and stuff. Um, but to start off, um, we'll just say whether the movie's good or not, and... I would say it was. How about you, bro? I really enjoyed it. And we decide what to give it. A six claws up, so whoosh, whoosh. three claws each, so six. Um, so that means it was a, it was a good movie and stuff. Um, it's definitely, at least in my opinion, the best Wolverine movie. Um, I'm trying to decide if it's the best X-Men movie overall. I mean, storyline-wise and action it is, but I'm just trying to like think of overall um, stuff, and I can't decide that. Do you have any opinion? I think it's the best x-men film that they've done so far yeah like i said i can't decide because i'm i like the x-men for all the different characters and stuff like that with this you don't have as many so it's that's the only reason i can't decide um but so it is a good movie so if you're wondering about seeing i think you should of course we saw stuff about rotten tomatoes giving it a good excellent score and everything and stuff so they're i would say they're pretty right on there i don't know if i would rate it as high but it's still pretty dang good um so what else can we say um i would say one the trailers don't i mean they kind of tell you this what's going on like storyline wise but almost everything in the trailers at least from what i saw is pretty much the beginning of the movie and then there's just a few parts scattered throughout so you're not really by seeing the trailer you're not really knowing the whole story and everything and there's all sorts of like twists and turns like to me this reminded me of like a thriller more of a, than an action hero movie and stuff like because there was like a lot of like frightening or scary type stuff uh, but no like there wasn't any like um horror movie like slashers or anything like that um but there was a lot of violence and um cursing and stuff like that so this is definitely a rated r film um a lot more blood and gore than you normally see in an X-Men movie or Marvel movie. and rather So it's just like Deadpool and everything. Um, so I don't know much beyond that. This is kind of a spoiler, but it's not because it's just to save you time. Don't sit till the end because there's no video at the... Or there's no like extended scene or additional scene, whatever, at the end. So don't sit through the credits like we did for nothing. Um, so I just don't want you to waste your time on that. Do you have anything else to add? Uh, I, I just want to say that that movie was really intense. Like, some of the fight scenes were really intense with how graphic they went on them. Yeah. For that being the first, like, X-Men R-rated film. But not only that, but there's one scene I want to cover later on in the spoilers section that was super intense and just draining after it was ended. Yeah. Um, I guess the last thing I'll say, which is it's kind of a spoiler, but I'm not going to say what happens or anything, but it is, a, I would say, a sad movie. Um, so be prepared for that. That's not all rainbows and butterflies going and doing stuff like that. Um, but I think that's really all there is to say, spoiler free. Um, so we'll now move to spoilers and stuff. So if you don't want to know what happens or parts of stories, whatever, um, you can shut the video off now and stuff. Um, and you can watch later or not watch, whatever. Um, but we're going to do spoilers now, so this is your warning. Okay. Um, so, first thing I want to say, which I guess is spoiler, um, so you find out that um, Logan, Charles, and Calbane and stuff are all living together, and um, they keep referencing something that happened to Ch like with Charles that happened to, I assume, the other X-Men, and that he did something, I assume, killed all of them. But they never reference what that was. And I wish they would have said or flashed back to it or something, just so you know. Because with, of course, the days of future past or whatever, at the very end, you got to see all the X-Men back together and everything. And then in this one, they're all gone. And so that kind of was very disappointing to me that you don't at least know for sure what happened. Oh, uh, they give it a hard hint as to what happened. Yeah, because of his seizures. I was going to say, Charles has seizures, and it almost is like at when he's not medicated, he has dementia or Alzheimer's, kind of, because yeah. 
Yeah, he's doing his Taco Bell commercial and stuff or whatever. That, and then he can't remember Logan. Like, he remembers him, but he doesn't know what he looks like, so he's lost in, like, a fog. And, yeah, he has these seizures that, like, paralyzes everybody. So I assume it's kind of like, I would say probably something like that happened to uh, Gene or something in the old movies. Maybe something like that relative to him. But on a mind level, like, not actual, like, where she, you know, exploded or whatever and stuff. Um... But, but there's that, and then of course we have, um, I guess I'll let you... The, the seizures that we're talking about here, that was earlier in this video that I talked about that said was just one of those draining scenes because it was so intense. Uh, in the film, like midway through the film, there's a huge scene where Charles hadn't been taking his meds, and he has one of his seizures, and... It, it is just so intense watching them do yeah. slow motion scenery, and it feels like it drags on. Yeah. And by the time they do and end it, it's you're just like drained. Yeah, and of course the like sound effects in the theater and stuff are all like thumping and every it's so loud and everything. Because after um, like once it slowed down and stopped, I was like, I wonder what it sounds like outside of the theater to like you know people walking by or in other theaters and stuff like how loud it was and everything, and that was just crazy. Um, and of course we ha got the introduction of X-23, which is um, Wolverine's daughter. It's what, taken from his blood? It's a clone of yeah. him. Uh, well, at least they say, like, for, the sample is taken for him, and so this is what would be his daughter then and stuff. And so she has two claws out of her um, hands, and then one out of her feet, or I guess, you know, on each hand and foot and stuff type thing, not just one. Um, so that's kind of cool because she, like, takes it out and so, like, kicks people and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. And then we got introduced to, like, what they called the new mut mutants, and I know Bro knows some of The only mutants. one that I really knew was Richter, which he has the ability to kind of control the tectonic plates in the earth and raise and lower and eradicate the ground and stuff. Yeah. And so we had that, and then, um, so I'm assuming by the way it ends and stuff, we'll probably or maybe get a new Mutants movie. Like I said, with it being young kids, it's hard to tell if they would do that or not, but um, the way they left it, that, that they could. So there's that, and then of course we got the um, doctors and like the, what you'd call the bad guys and stuff, the, the what, Reavers. Reavers, yeah. So they have all their, like, what, mechanical body parts and stuff? For that. Which I was kind of let down about. One of the Reavers that was kind of populi popularized throughout the comics had a set of, like, military treads. So uh, his, like, lower torso was yeah. gone and he just sat on there and, like, rolled around. <laughs> that would have been cool. <laughs> um, of course, yeah, you had those guys. And then you had um, the Doctor... Which, of course, is a guy that's been in a bunch of movies, and um, I really enjoy him. I don't know what his name is at all. Um, but that I like seeing him in the movie. And then, of course, you had um, I don't know, X-24, which was looked exactly like Wolverine. Of course, played by Hugh, ja Hugh Jackman and stuff like that, too. It was a full-on clone, which... Yeah. His character was a little bit of a letdown, because they showed a giant cage... In the film, and I was hoping for one of two characters, and I was hoping for either Dakin, which is Wolverine's legit son, yeah. or I was hoping for Sabretooth. Yeah, that would have been cool, too, to bring Sabretooth back in and stuff. Because I know back when the movie was being filmed, there was mention about possibly bringing Leif Schreiber, or whatever his name is, back in as Sabretooth and stuff, and I thought that would have been cool. But yeah, so the whole time I saw it, I was like, is that his you know, son Dakin or whatever? Or however you say his name and stuff. Um, but it wasn't, at least by the stuff we got. But it was, like, cool, the additional, like, little story parts they put in and stuff. Like, where they meet the farm family and everything. But it's just, of course, sad the way it all ends and everything. Um, so I don't know what else there is to go off. So just, I guess, that it was sad. The way it ends, of course, everyone dies in the end except for the kids that are left of the new mutants and everything so Xavier dies Caliban dies which was a kind of cool we got to see him in the um apocalypse movie he was with I think um 
what's her, Psylocke was with him. Like, when you first see her in um, the Apocalypse movie, she's with him, and he's, like, in an underground bunker and stuff, and Apocalypse does stuff to him or whatever to find other mutants and everything. And so he's in this with living with Wolverine and um, Xavier, like, to try and take care of Xavier and stuff. And, of course, he can, like, track mutants and stuff like that. Um, so it was really cool to see him, and I like the character and stuff, and... Um, they made you like, like he was a really likable character and everything. Of course, he gets killed, um, and then the, of course the sad part of Wolverine actually dying. So of course that lays the rest the Wolverine movies and everything, or Hugh Jackman as Wolverine and stuff till they possibly find a new actor or something like that if they do. And so that's all there really is. Do you have anything else to add, bro? I do like how they kind of tied in the Death of Wolverine comics into this with, like, Wolverine slowly losing his powers, even though in the comics he lost them completely. Yeah, that's something they don't really explain in the movie. I just assume with his old age and stuff, because you could tell, obviously, he was graying, his body looked old and wrinkly and stuff like that, and then um, he had to wear the reading glasses and stuff because he couldn't see, and then his healing powers weren't. Um, working as well, so it was like taking him a lot longer, so I just assumed it was an old age type thing. Well, he did mention that and then, there was a scene where he had been brutally uh, like mauled, and a doctor was taking care of him and said that he had been poisoned. Yeah. And he referenced that it was the adamantium, adamantium. Yeah. in him that was poisoning him and stuff. So it's kind of to remind me of the whole uh, Iron Man thing with his chest thing poisoning him and stuff. Um, but there's that, and then, yeah, and then he just dies and everything. And, of course, super sad at seeing the Wolverine and all that sort of stuff. So, of course, that started, why, in the, like, 2000, 99, 2000, something like that. So, pretty much most of my my life has been with Wolverine, or Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. So, it'll be weird to getting used to a new person and stuff like that. But I assume it'll be easy to do and everything. Um... The one last thing I know I have to add to this is that, of course, you get to see the Deadpool thing at the beginning. Like, when I first saw that, I was like, oh, they're going to somehow tie Deadpool into this movie and stuff. Because, you know, that's something they want that I know, like, Ryan Reynolds really wants is to be in a movie with Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. So I was like, oh, they're actually doing it. It may be, like, a, just a small, short thing. But it, it's so cool. But then they find out it's just, like, a pre-movie video and... I said the bros, like, I wonder if they're going to start doing these at the beginning of all the X-Men movies, because that'd be kind of cool. Of course, obviously, if they're, the X-Men movies are, like, their normal rating of PG-13 or whatever and stuff, they can't really do a Deadpool rated R thing at the beginning and stuff, but they could always turn it down and just make it more comical and stuff now, like that. Now, I don't know if you caught this during the Deadpool little snippet short film whatever. There's a scene where he goes into a phone booth to change yeah. his clothes. And graffitied on the phone booth is Nathan Summers coming uh -huh. soon. Nathan Summers yeah. is Cable. That's, yeah. Which does make sense because they've advertised in the next Deadpool movie it's going to have Cable and stuff. So that makes a lot of sense and stuff. So there's all sorts of stuff like that probably hidden throughout the movie. You've, I'm sure you'll see um, videos on YouTube and everything of Easter eggs that people break down throughout the movie and stuff. But of course, when you're watching it for the first time, you can't catch all that stuff. So you probably just see little things and stuff like that um but i think that's going to be it for our video so if you enjoyed please leave the um a thumbs up leave any comments you have down below especially if you've seen the wolverine movie let me know what you thought of it and don't forget to red subscribe button if you want to see more and we will see you next time Whoosh.